All right, hey, we're moving on to chapter two, where we actually get numbers and data and actually do things like add and subtract. It's starting to feel like math. Um, so let's look at some actual data. Um, since this is stats and fats, let's look at some nutrition related data. Um, this is the weight of every United States president at the time that they were in office, uh, measured in pounds. At the moment, this is just kind of a blop of data. That's the technical term, blop. And if you spend a little bit of time staring at it, you might be able to find the um, lowest weight in there, which if you look around for a while, you see there's 100 right there. And then if you look a little bit longer, you find there's nothing lower than 100, so you can kind of maybe find the lowest value. And if you look through a while longer, maybe eventually you can track down where the highest weight is, um, which I'm having trouble finding right now. The point is it's not super easy to analyze this data, and it's certainly not easy to figure out you know, what's a typical weight of a U.S. president. And this is for a fairly small data set. Uh, most real-life data sets are thousands or even tens of thousands of data points. So we need some ways to summarize. And that's what chapter two is about, is summarizing data. Now, the first way that we're gonna look at to summarize this data is to make what's called a frequency distribution. And when you look at a frequency distribution, you're probably just gonna say, that's a table. And so the idea behind a frequency distribution is to set up some classes. And I've made these classes already. Um, there's nothing magical about the ones I've made. You could have split it up differently. You might have decided that you wanted to go by 25. So you could have gone 100 to 124 and then 125 to 149, 150, so on. Um, I chose to split it up this way. Um, and the first thing we're gonna look at here is frequency and then we'll talk about relative frequency. Um, so I'm just gonna make a little dividing line here. Um, so frequency literally means how frequent is it, and um, it literally just means what's the count. Let me give it this little 100 over here. Okay. Um, so you would look through your table and you would say how many presidents fell in this first class here in 100 to 129 pounds. And when you look through, you will eventually find out that there is only one, that, that 100 right there, James Madison. Uh, so you'd say there's only one person uh, that fits in that 100 to 129. And then you look through and you figure out how many presidents weighed 130 uh, to 159. And this is probably the point where you're going to have to start, if you're doing this by hand, start crossing things off. Okay, we use that one. You find 130 to 159. Okay, there's one. There's two. Uh, let's see, there's three, there's four, and there's five. And it turns out that's all of them. So there's five in the 130 to 159 category. And you just do this for the rest of the categories. It turns out 160 to 189 is pretty common. Uh, that's 26 of the presidents have had weights in that range. Uh, and you can fill in the rest of the table in a similar way. Uh, I've already done the counting, so I'll skip the tedium and just fill in the numbers here. Um, let's see, 250 to 279, there's only one. Uh, we have a couple empty classes here, and that's okay. We do want to still fill them in. There's no president that was in the 280 to 309 range. And there's no president that was in 310 to 339 range. And there was one. <laughs> in the 340 to 369 range. Okay, um, so there's our frequencies. <clears throat> and our relative frequencies, let's just go ahead and add that on while we're here. Uh, relative frequency just says, okay, relative to what? In other words, 26 people fell into this third class right here. Is that a lot? Or is that just a little bit? Uh, 26 out of a million, or 26 out of 44 in this case. Uh, so relative frequency just says, let's just turn, it's another fancy word for percent. So it says, let's just turn these frequencies into percents. 
So you do need to figure out that the total number of data points in this list uh, is 44. Uh, if you know your presidents, you know uh, Donald Trump is uh, the 45th president of the United States, but there are only 44 data points here. Uh, Grover Cleveland served as president on non-consecutive occasions, so he's counted as the 22nd and 24th president, but he's only one person, only one data point. We've only had 44 different presidents. Okay, all that to say that for your data set, you'd figure out the total, which is 44. And you would then say, okay, this first class with only one person in it, what's one out of 44? And keep in mind to do that um, calculator-wise, um, that's just one divided by 44. So you say one divided by 44. And to turn that into a percent, you move the decimal place two places to the right. So this is like two. 2.27%. This particular uh, calculator has a percent button. Hopefully you don't need that, but I guess if you want to hit that, you can. Um, uh, but anyway, you'd say this is about about 2%. And I'm just going to round to the nearest whole percent. So let's just say 2%. And then you would do 5 divided by 44 for your next calculation. So 5 divided by 44. And that's about 11%. And again, I'm just going to round uh, to the nearest whole percentage. Um, so you can do 11%. And then uh, 26 out of 44. 26 out of 44 is 59% roughly. So I think you get the idea. Uh, you can certainly fill the rest of these in. And in fact, the other ones, uh, frequency of one should also be a percent. At 2%, these are obviously going to be 0%. 0%. And let's do the 3 and the 7 just to complete this table. Uh, let's see. 3 divided by 44... It's about 7%, and 7 divided by 44 is about 16%. Um, so, 7% and 16%. And this column, since we're talking percentages, of course, uh, should add up to 100%. Uh, you'll find occasionally uh, that these don't add up to 100% just because of rounding, and that's okay. Now, if you happen to get 99% or 101%, that's probably just rounding. Uh, if you got like 32% for your total, uh, then something has gone wrong and you should go back and check your numbers. Uh, let's talk a quick little bit of vocab and then we'll be done for this section. Uh, so let me erase um, these little marks here. Uh, so this vocab we will need for the next section. It's going to feel a little bit arbitrary right now, but um, but it will make sense when we get into 2.3. <clears throat> uh, so one thing we want to talk about, let's see, let me get rid of the data here. Um, one thing we want to talk about is how wide these classes are. And I'm going to claim uh, these classes have... Uh, 30 as their width. and th So that's the actual technical term uh, is class width. And class width is, and be careful here, it's the distance or the, the subtraction from the start of one class to the start of the next class. Uh, so the class width for this particular frequency distribution um, is 30. And the mistake that people want to make is they want to call it 29, right? Because they want to go 100 to 129 for that first class. Uh, but the class width is defined to be the distance from the start of one class to the start of the next class. Okay, so we've got class width. Uh, and that's the same for the whole table. It's the, the class width for this table is 30. Uh, we also need to talk about two other terms. <clears throat> we need to talk about... class boundaries
And we also need to talk about class midpoints. Um, class midpoints is kind of what it sounds like. It's the middle of each class. So every class has its own midpoint. Uh, let's just maybe focus on this last one here. 340 to 369. We just want to get the number that's exactly in the middle of that class. And uh, middle is average, right? So uh, calculator-wise, we do 340 plus 369 whole thing divided by two that would give us the class midpoint for this class right here so let's just do that 340 plus 369 340 plus 369 is that Ooh, I did times uh, sorry let's do that again 340 plus 369 there we go is that uh, divided by two uh, it's 354.5 um, so the class midpoint for this class is 354.5. Uh, make sure that was, yeah, 354.5. Um, so each class has its own midpoint, of course. You know, there's a midpoint for this next class and for the next class. Um, let's also talk about class boundaries. Uh, so class boundaries are numbers that are halfway between the end of one class and the start of the next class. Um, so there's lots of class boundaries, of course, but let's look at the end. I'm just going to pick this one in the middle of the frequency distribution. Let's look at this class that ends at 249 and the next one that starts at 250. So the class boundary would actually be halfway between those two numbers, halfway between 249 and 250 which happens to be uh, 249.5, right? And if you really want to get formal about it, um, the way you would figure that out, halfway between 249 and 250, again, is to average them. You would grab a calculator and you do 249 plus 250, uh, all divided by two, but that would give you the 249.5. Um, so there's a class boundary at 249.5. If you're looking up to the next one, halfway between 279 and 280, there's another class boundary at 279.5. And there's another class boundary at 309.5. Um, so the last thing I need to point out about class boundaries that's a little bit tricky is there's actually a class boundary after the last class. So there's one at 369.5, and there's a class boundary before the first class as well. And you kind of have to follow the pattern here. Uh, but the very first class boundary is half a unit before the start of the first class. So there's a class boundary at 99.5, then 129.5, 159.5, all the way down to 369.5. So your homework's going to ask you to look at some frequency distributions and come up with class widths, class boundaries, class midpoints, and also maybe change frequency into relative frequency.